Hello and welcome to Tabletop 24. I'm Alan. I'm John. I'm Brian. And welcome to another episode of We'll Play Again, where we take a look at games we've played with a focus on how soon we're going to get them back to the table. With ever increasing collections, time can be precious, so would we play again? And today we have Streets from Sinister Fish Games. In Streets, you will be taking one of the tiles in your hand, placing it into a pre existing street, or closing off a pre existing street, and moving people into your new property and potentially scoring points on enclosed streets. Once you place a tile, you'll be placing on your ownership marker to let people know that's yours, and then you'll be drawing a new tile. And that continues round, and that is the basic game. Now, there are a couple of modules that you can play that was in the Kickstarter edition, um, one of which is the business tokens. So when you are scoring your street, you may be taking those, and they're a set collection at the end. Or alternatively, you have got um, essentially power, player powers in the form of different uh, types of people that would be working on the um, streets for you. So, for instance, I've got the franchiser, which I played in a previous game, and you've got some random ones there, so there's quite a bit of replayability for it. But first off, the first thing to say, this is a Kickstarter edition, so there are a few extra niceties, but the production quality is fantastic, and it's something that we've, yeah. we've started to expect from Sinister Fish. Yeah. Um, meeples, the tokens. I'll add into, I like the... Um branding of these games and the boxes and the fonts and stuff i think they all fit together quite nicely i think it's it's visually identifiable and, and stands out on the shelf if you've got a couple of them up there yeah. so you know that's a bonus for it i think as well i think it's it's well thought out and presented the whole thing apart from closing the box i was gonna say this box doesn't quite work yeah. does it though because yeah the, yeah the, the, that's the, the book yeah quite... yeah so we've got the raw book here and when you're trying to shut the lid it quite often catches in the inside of the wrap I yeah, he always has to get it through. But there is a new game coming from Harken Gardner and Sister Fish called Moon soon. So that will hopefully be, I think it's hitting Kickstarter June, July time, which I think for me is going to be a bank queer. We've caught up with Harken Gardner at Aircon. So if you haven't done already, check out the previous video. Um, and hopefully I'll be catching up with Sister Fish at UKGE. So this is filmed just before that. So. Mm. Um, now, Obviously, I mentioned the two variants and the modules that you can put into the game. And I think the game is designed with these in mind. But the if you take those out, and the base game is literally laying tiles, closing streets, moving people, scoring points. Your action is pretty much on your turn: place a tile, place a place a thing, take a tile, take a new uh, tile, and everything else from there is just reactive. So it itself in the base game is quite light, and I think. You could be misconceived on that with potentially with since the of other games and the previous game in the in the series with that. So, um, which would have been Villagers. So, I think Villagers is a much stronger game. I think it, out of the box, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, whereas Streets, at its base level, I think can be a little bit simple. <laughs> Extreme, I think it's, I'd say extremely light at its base level and to the point of it being potentially a filler game where you just get it out at the end of the night just to, to eat up a bit of time at the end of a, a session. Um, yeah, so we've played it a few times as the base game um, and I've played the expansion. Um, and the expansion, they do add something. Um, they take the game from a simple game to more of a sort of gamers um, kind of game, if you like. Um we didn't play very many games, um, so the I think the set collection works quite well. Um, it's not a thing to think about, and if you're used to playing games, you kind of, something that's going to go in quite easily, and you're going to understand what you need to do. Some of the player powers um, didn't seem quite balanced with each other, um, so I'm not sure how well they work, and it may be that we just need to get used to playing with them and, and um, understand what they can do and use them more effectively. I think there's a bit of luck in, involved in these and not, not necessarily adding as much as, as that part. Yeah, there's, from my reckoning, recollection, there's one or two of the cards that could not break the game but we could use to rack up points more than yeah. the others. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I was using the franchiser. Um, yeah. And when you score a building, add two for each one of these business tokens that you're taking. And you could quite quickly monopolise the, the type of these that you've got and you could quite easily, and whether we've, I've misplayed that, it could well be a thing, but you could quite yeah. easily and quickly. Wouldn't be the first one. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be the first time. Um, which we could quite quickly rack up a lot of points. Yeah. And yeah. I think Brian felt in, in the last game that we played that potentially I'd pulled away a bit too much, too yeah. early. Yeah. 
it was still quite a close game, I think, at the end of the Yes. But yeah, yeah. that early bit, I think maybe uh, you know, it, you might need more testing on that from, yeah. from us. Um, yeah. I'm fairly yeah. sure there'd been a lot of testing done on it anyway. But yeah. Yeah. That's what I felt. There's a nice variety in the play um, in, in and an almost a push your luck element in picking your cards and closing off your streets. So uh, where they build up and then close off at the end. So you push your luck thinking, am I going to wait or am I going to maximise my points? I could get another wait and see if somebody else is going to put in there. But then when you close it off, you move the meeples about and you could benefit from those or push them onto somebody else and they could steal them. Um, and almost yes, yeah. demonstrated another point there for me that putting these out, the game sprawls. Mm. It doesn't necessarily end up where you start playing. So this could go this way quite easily rather than coming down here. Yeah. So yeah. in terms of it going on a table, it's almost Carcassonne in that extent is, yeah. is you don't know where this game is going to lead you in terms of table size. I think there is a risk on that. And I think the first game that we played, although we were playing it wrong, uh, check out our Instagram um, if you can see that picture. It's cool. We've been playing it wrong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it, we we overextended the streets. We, we, we had, we'd missed the fact that you can only have five buildings in a yeah. street before you close it. And essentially, I think the person we were playing with had gone off and they were just playing their own game on yeah. one side. And But then they were struggling because they couldn't close the street down. And, yeah. and obviously, um, we now know why. We were yeah. playing it slightly wrong. But I think you could quite easily, particularly in a four-player game, potentially go off. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be other things that are going to benefit you and you're going to see things that potentially you're going to play a, play a building out because it is going to benefit you in that area. Yeah. But... I think you can go off and do your own little game a little yeah. bit. I mean, it's a nitpicky thing, really, because other games do that as well. So, as gamers, you're used to that kind of thing, and it, yeah. it's just the it's just the nature of the game. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't want to sell that as an it's not a negative. It's just the nature of the game. It's what it is. It's what it is. So, um, scoring points. Then, um, what I found slightly frustrating this is you end up stacking um, meeples on on the card like this, and and you've also got to put your token there as well, and these things move around, and you get more. And it can get quite difficult to see on the cards what you're trying to play for, really. Mm -hmm. um, and when you come to scoring, you score each way in turn, and it's based on who owns the, the tag on there as well. So you start scoring, I'll score that one, and then I'll we'll score that one. And I, I, found, I found that a bit frustrating. I don't know quite why, um, but it just didn't, I couldn't see. I didn't know where I was, where I was going to be in some points until we actually scored it. And then scoring it felt a bit clunky to me. You've got these beautiful little wooden sort of um, money tokens. They're lovely. Um, and everybody the way you, game money. Everybody should be looking, game money should be like that. All game producers. And the way you get your points, especially literally, is like oh, I've got ten ten dollars for that. Okay, I'll take ten dollars. There you go. Um, and that's that's your point at the end of the game. So that was kind of simple enough. But again, kind of. Juggle the point, I get ten dollars for that. On oh, next card, I'm going to get six dollars. So it just yeah, felt. Like I think. I think the main the main bit here is you're scoring more likely off of the type of building or the type of yeah. residents that are in those buildings. Mm -hmm. And but sometimes it when, changes cards, doesn't it? Like, yeah. Every card can affect that card as well if you've got different colour. Yeah. Vehicles. And and I think there is a bit in here that you have to be quite careful what you're placing where. Yeah. And you may have a strategy that you're going for. But if you're, I mean, let's just say you've just thrown, I mean, these are in the wrong place anyway, but you've just thrown them on there, you've covered, I've covered that scoring point up. So later on in the game, when we're looking at it, we might not realise what, what that is. Now, the iconography is very clear at the bottom yeah, and very clear for the business icons. But I think you've kind of got to remember what you've placed where and almost if you were playing really competitively, now, I'm not sure that that's what this game's designed for, but if you're playing heavily competitively, it's almost going, right, okay, well, what's what's there on every round before you place anything? Yeah. And, and pull that out. I think there is an element of, of risk of AP in this because you are considering where you want to go and, you know, that pu pushing where you want to go, do I want to close it off? What have I got to maximise my points? So you can... It's very much, I can't choose until the person before me is gone. Mm. I can't come up with a kind of strategy because that could be whipped away from you. Yeah. So you, there is that waiting there for me. And even down to placement of cards as well, which is kind of a normal game thing anyway. But if I think I need that road there, there but you've already gone there, but mm. okay, now what do I do? You know, yeah. 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 And then I think also as well, you're placing a building expecting it to score a certain points. And, and the benefit is if other people have played that and come along. So for instance, here, um, this one will be scoring on the commercial shopping. 
buildings, which I've, you, we've got one in the wild already in the street that we've closed off here, that you might almost be either hoping to add more to it or other people can advance to it. So sometimes your scoring is a little bit out of your hands. Yeah, and a lot of my points I've had, especially in that last game, were nothing to do with me playing it. It's just... Um, I'm gonna close blind luck, me! I'm going to cl close up the street and then all the yeah. people move on to my, yeah. my house and I got loads of points out of it. And, you know... Um, no, but that's the another element you need to consider if i'm closing this off where are they going to go yeah, to yeah. all that person points and handing those points so i think over. it's got a lot more depth than yet and i found this after just one or two plays really it seems really simple but i think it can be quite a deep game yeah. i think well that's where the um the player powers and the the business tokens add that extra little bit of complexity that make it more more than just a tile placement scoring game and then and mm -hmm. in its simplicity it is just a tile placing game and like i said i said before you place a tile draw a tile yes there are elements of impacting on where you place that tile and what you're going to score off the back of it so um i think yeah it's it, it bears a lot of play i do think because there are you are limited to the number of tiles yes you'll take some out for varying pay accounts and there were some extra tiles that come with the kickstarter edition and and so forth you could not get to know which buildings you want and you could get to a point mm -hmm. where you're going these are the these are the four buildings in the game that if i get they're going to score me a lot of points and in this order yep. you could almost craft it a little bit now that is a lot better player than myself but i think it could quite easily be possible is it, it, i think we put this in other videos it's them it's them uh, yeah and open for discussion the meta of the game it's learning those initial moves that will give you the most benefit or the cards that will produce you the most benefit in any game that's an engine building it's those cards that will get you the engine to to churn the points so there's always that element of it in um yeah okay John. would you play again i think i'd hesitate to play this again um i enjoyed playing it but i think i'd rather play other games if somebody had it out and i arrived at a game tonight and it was on the table i'd sit and play it quite happily but i don't think i'd hesitate to suggest it as a game that i'd like to put on the table to play Right, I'd play it again. I think there's more to it that I haven't un unlocked yet, and I'd love to explore some of these player powers a bit more. Is it for my collection? Probably not, but I'd definitely play it again. Yeah, so for me, I'd play it again soon, and I think one of the saving graces for me is a this is my game, so I've kind of want to play it again, so <laughs> it's not <laughs> uh, but also there is a solo variant on it, and solo variant's quite nice, and being the fact that it, it is a simple place to tie and score there is a little bit in there with the fact that you have to there's no placement direction for the ai it is you have to place the tile that's best suited to them so you kind of have to you're essentially playing two people's game um and you're trying to beat yourself at that point but it's it's a nice game it's fantastically produced i like what harkon's doing yeah i'm um, looking forward to moon i liked villagers um hopefully i'll be getting shifting season soon for that and I'd like to see potentially an expansion for this. Now, there's not much more room in the box. So I'm not too sure what they're going to be fitting in there, but possibly something doing a little bit different. Some more buildings, some different types of buildings would, would be yeah. would be quite nice. But for me, it's definitely we'll play again soon. So. Brilliant. With all that in mind, then, thank you for watching this episode of We'll Play Again. If you haven't done so already, check out other videos on the channel. Give us a like and a subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.